occupation and organization. Now, these are codes that aren't necessarily related, but they tell you about the type of organization that employs the person. And again, this is a really big deal, uh, occupation code and organization code. Occupation is what type of job this person has. Uh, and again, those two code areas, I think, are really, really, really important especially if you do business and professional programs. Because knowing about what type of job they have, what their, their job responsibilities are, knowing about what type of industry, what type of company they come from, will help your program staff uh, build classes, do marketing uh, for those programs. Um, and that's kind of reiterating what we talked about. I guess I have those slides in twice. Uh, interest codes, uh, another big, big deal. And again, as we said earlier, if you put in a source code or a subject code in the class, subject code in the class, whenever a person takes that class, they automatically have an interest code added to their name record. You, of course, can add codes independently as a staff person or the student when they go online and, and look at their account on the web, on ACEWeb, they can add interest. And again, these interest codes are ones that you can run mailing lists from, you could do email blasts from, you could export emails to a file if you're using constant contact or third party uh, e marketing tools. So again, <clears throat> a great tool. The big, big deal on this is interest code scoping. And the idea here is that you can define categories of interest codes and then use them to um, use them to manage a large set of codes. I'm going to roll over to manager for this. So again, um, in the codes area for interest codes, names, interest codes, uh, a program can have lots of interest codes. Uh, I have 30 or 40 in my demo. I know I've seen some schools with literally hundreds of interest codes. One of the things you can do now is to create a scoping code to assign to an interest code. Okay. Well, why would you do that? Uh, several reasons. Like I say, number one, if you have a large number of codes and the codes might be categorized into different areas, for instance, general mailing list type codes and topic codes. Maybe you've got, like Canton, two different programs using the same student manager, a health pro programs or nursing <clears throat> and a general adult ed. Well, you could assign an adult ed code to the adult ed code, to alt ed subject interest codes. You could assign a health programs code to those that have to do with the health or the nursing side. OK, so far so good. What's cool is that when you're logged in <clears throat> as whoever you are, Chuck, Sam, Bill, you can go into your preferences on the names table and say, when I log in, I'm mainly interested in seeing the business and industry program codes when I go in to do a drop down for interest codes or subject codes for um, a, a student. So I'm going to assign the business code to my record here. <clears throat> Close out of this, come back to my record. So when I click add interest code, the only codes I see in this list out of you saw 30 or 40 that were in the total list are the codes that are scoped as business. Now when I'm in here, I say, well, I, I want to look to see what the nursing programs are doing. There's the health codes. Here are the general mailing list codes. Again, <clears throat> primarily a way to help you manage um, larger lists of codes, kind of break it into chunks, be able to actually separate out codes um, for different program areas if you have multiple program areas. Again, SMU, uh, programs uh, that have Houston, programs that have multiple areas in the same system, this I think would be a very useful tool. 
there are lots of user-defined codable fields on the name record. And I want to kind of make sure we review those. Um, occupation and organization code actually can be relabeled. So if you have a program, maybe it's a community ed program, where you don't uh, occupation organization type isn't a big deal, but you might want to record resident or non-resident <coughs> and keep that up in the main name screen, uh, you can repurpose those. Name code one, general purpose character code. Uh, name code two, general purpose character code. That is one that actually, if you were doing social security numbers, remember, that code could be encrypted. And again, we're going to hit this more next uh, couple weeks in the preferences uh, uh, webinar. Language code, uh, member type or member number, again, user-defined field. <clears throat> the badge name now, you remember, Matthew now allows you to relabel the tag on badge name. So if you don't care about badge name, but maybe you want the uh, maiden name for, for women uh, students, uh, you want to record a maiden name. Uh, name char one, this is basically a general purpose character field. Again, these are all ones that you can uh, define the label and store the code in there that you want. Uh, more codes on the demographics two field. Now again, um, on the name screen, you have demographics one, demographics two. Lots of codes on this second field. The default codes relate to primarily demographics, kind of tying into iPads and some of the vocational technical reporting that a lot of schools need to do. But but again, if you if that does not apply to you. You can go in, uh, use the preferences area, relabel these, and use them for to store uh, information that's relative or important to what you're doing. <clears throat> and uh, the point about this, some of these codes are two digits long, some are one digit, some are three. So you've got two, one, I think that's a two, one, one, I think that's two, that's a three, a three. Uh, so again, depending on what type of data you might need to store in there, you can find an appropriate code, label it the way you want, <clears throat> and uh, start tracking your data. Um, and of course, don't forget additional info, the user-defined fields, uh, the 20 user-defined fields. And of course, technically the credential area, which is of course the brand new option in 7.2a, are, are codable. You put in codes, uh, define elements to store. 